I don't know if he gets away with it. I think that the way the book works is by it, by this kind of the the risk that he won't get away with it because he um, he describes everything. Yeah, he describes everything as if it were of equal value. Like he takes the same kind of excitement in a pair of new um, warm up pants when he's a kid. He describes it with the same intensity as he describes like the the face of his dead. Father, so I think part of the drama of the book is trying to figure out if he's capable of making distinctions, which is kind of a way of saying not knowing if he can really make a work of art. That that's what makes the book kind of exciting and addictive. To observe the structure and realize it looks like a sideways slave ship. They don't know about Jim Crow laws or Malcolm X. He is far more concerned with awards and glory and attention and other things that people usually say. Thumping out sea shanties while rival churches toil the hours. You'd be better off examining. Yeah, um, I mostly draw biographical stories and they're mostly very short, precise comments about little moments and things. Sincerely. Je crois que je sers mieux à cause de l'humanité en paraissant qu'en travaillant. C'est vrai. Il faut avoir le courage de ne pas travailler. He's been given extra time, an extra life in fact, and now he will use it to pay back what he's taken. So the day after the Brooklyn Book Festival, I go to, there's supposed to be this protest on Wall Street, right? And it's supposed to happen, I think, I got on a website and it was like, you know, show up at 9 to begin and then at noon we'll be there, you know, we're going to Wall Street at noon for our sit-in or whatever. So I show up at 3 o'clock and uh, it's over. <laughs> Like, literally, everybody's gone. Like, there's there's guardrails up, there's barricades up, there's cops everywhere. There's no protesters whatsoever to speak of. So I walk around, I'm just like, well, fuck it, I might as well, you know, do my weird, like, gloomy 9-11 memory walk that I do from time to time. Because I've spent an odd amount of time in Lower Manhattan. I was on near Ground Zero when the 10th anniversary of 9-11 happened. And that's where Zuccotti Park was. That's something that, like, almost nobody mentions, but Zuccotti Park was, like, across the fucking street from where the World Trade Center used to be. Where the big fucking ditch is now, where the World Trade Center isn't. Lower Manhattan has this weird, I mean, it's a war zone. And, like, there's these old ancient graveyards, there's barbed wire up, and there's these military kind of barricades. And the whole idea that there's, like, this 9-11 memorial, like, this tourist fucking site, you know, to go down there and, like, you know, take your picture where the fucking World Trade Center used to be. It's just so grotesque to me. I remember before the 9-11 memorial site opened... They had the 9-11 Memorial Preview gift shop where you could fucking go in and it was like a little museum to 9-11 sort of before they opened the, the memorial proper. You know, the whole thing about 9-11 is there's this attitude to like, we'll never forget, we should never forget. I think we should forget. Let's forget it. Let's move on, you know? The idea that we want to perpetuate this memory is exactly the whole point of the event. You know, they wanted it to infiltrate our consciousness like shrapnel. And they want it to grow. They don't want it to heal. They don't want us to forget. We should forget about it. You know, it was awful. It's the one day that probably marked all of our lives. It was the beginning of our sort of neo-feudalism and technocratic military fucking extravaganza that we live in now. And the fucking thing that they're putting up in the World Trade Center site looks like this weird, like, the rib cage of some kind of, like, cybernetic armored millipede war machine or something. Just a quick addendum to this piece in the true spirit of coincidence and sinister occult meanings hidden in our everyday lives. The file number of the movie of the weird demonic satanic flying sandworm thing being built on the World Trade Center site, the image number is 666 in my Final Cut program. So you take that for what it's worth.
You, you, I'll leave that up to you to decide what that means. What else do people have to go on, you know? Yeah. Other than, what is ISIS? Dude, it's so scary. Hey, hey, I've kind of been on a Satan thing. Yeah, I... I can see. And as you're I little, say, you're, and as you're I little, say, you're, as I say, I've been on a certain kind of thing. It's flames. I find myself, in, you know, walking through. Color. So I met up with Jake. I had not seen him in uh, quite some time. Met up with him, and we went to this reading at Mellow Pages that this girl, Dallas, invited to me to. She published this book called Bushwick Nights with a Z. Looks like very good stuff. It was really awkward because uh, Jake had like some weed in a bag, and he had lost it on the way over. He had dropped it on the subway. So we didn't, we were sober at this, this feminist poetry reading. And it was cool. I mean, they were all really cool people. Did you laugh at this comfort? Yeah, of course. I don't, I don't like to watch other people be uncomfortable. Like, that's not funny to me. But I know when, if I say something uncomfortable or awkward, I would laugh at it to sort of acknowledge that I know how ridiculous it is. This My poops? White? It's white, dude. Then what happened? After that, we met up with Eric Preston, who lived right down the street at the McKibben Lofts, and we fucking jammed out with him for a little while. This is the Quaker Cemetery in Prospect Park. It's cordoned off to the public. Supposedly Montgomery Cliff is buried in there. Walking down the bike track, this day could easily be mistaken for that day. 